Right, so before we move on to the lower leg muscles, there's actually uh, one more view that's kind of beneficial to do in real time. And that will be this inner thigh, inner view of the thigh here. So remember before we had the abductor magus. Now where that attaches to is here along the inner part, the under part of the, make sure I'm on the right layer. Yeah, that's fine. No, actually it should be under muscle, let's say. So it's on this inner part of the hip here. And then it comes over and it connects to the femur, and it comes down like this, right? So it connects all along that ridge there, and it kind of comes up and has, well, kind of a shape like this. Now, knowing this kind of inner view of these muscles, and really this, it's not the shape of this muscle you want to memorize, it's going to be the inner shape of all the muscles, and uh, basically like when you get to a body map, but knowing where the muscles attach is important because you'll be able to go, okay, if the legs move this way, then that muscle would stretch this way, even though you only see a part of it, it's still good to know how it stretches. All right, I'm going to go ahead and color this in real fast. Right now, for the rest of the muscles, I'm just going to do as an outer layer because they're all just going to be kind of. I'm going to draw them as as the map, as if they as if they overlap each other, like how we see it when they're all there. Uh, because we already covered, you know, all the muscles and how they where they attach and all this sort of thing. So that's not important to go over it again. But it is good to know this inner shape of all these muscles. So the next muscle we want to draw then is the gracilis, or it's probably pronounced gracilis anyway. So. It connects over there to the front of the pelvis, so we're just going to draw what we can see. And it kind of comes here, and there's two muscles that kind of make a V here. Remember, it comes down, wraps around the tibia bone here, comes around like that. So this is what we can see of it from this angle. My bad, actually. It should actually come and cover a lot of that magus muscle. Make sure I'm on the right layer. Right, so that's that muscle here. All right, the next one is the semimembranosus, a uh, hard one, difficult one to pronounce. And remember, it came down and connected down here to the tibia. And these two muscles from the inner side view is going to show a kind of V pattern. We're going to be drawing over this muscle in just a second, but this is how it goes. It kind of goes like this down there. This is going to draw it like this. We're going to end up drawing over part of this anyway. And that's where we have the next muscle. So before I even color in that muscle at all, I guess I could color it in real quick. Hold on. Right, so then we have the left bicep femoris, and it, it over, remember it comes underneath this, wraps around the front over there, but it comes underneath here, and it wraps around the front of this muscle a little bit, and then kind of connects over here and blocks off part of the muscle there. So it's hiding part of that muscle, and this is what causes that kind of uh, shape in the back, that shape like this in the back of the leg that we covered over here, this shape here. So now we're, now we're, the two muscles that we're dealing with here, well this muscle we're drawing right now. So we're drawing this muscle right now, and then this, the other muscle that comes up underneath it, we've drawn here from the back. Get a better angle of it here though. I'm actually going to see a good amount of that muscle there. I'll go ahead and color this one in real time. All right, so here it comes under then over that muscle, hides most of that muscle. Just going to add a few highlights here, and we'll go ahead and add shape of the, or the color of the tendon. And then finally I want to start separating these with black. This way we can really start to see the leg separation. Now you might be thinking, why am I having to learn all these muscles? And maybe you've already tried to skip it, and then you come back, and uh, you know went out of order or whatever. But you're gonna, what you're going to notice is that when you know the muscle structure, 
then all the other stuff of how to draw the stick figures and, and draw the figure from your mind is all easy. And you can even start inventing your own system for drawing these things. So, all right, so now we're drawing the bicep femoris, another muscle we're already familiar with that we already drew. This is this muscle here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's this muscle here one on the outside. I think I said this backwards over here too. Uh, what we were drawing here was this muscle. Now we're drawing this outer muscle. So let's just stick to the same leg so it's not confusing. From this angle you can see that this muscle kind of is overlapping. It's coming in front of the other muscle. It comes down here and then it kind of comes off, connects down there to the fibula. This muscle also has some thickness to it. And I'll go ahead and draw this in real time as well. Finally, we're going to start separating these muscles again with black. All right. We're going to be able to see very little of the vastus lateralis. But first we'll be able to see the buttocks coming up like this. And then we'll just be able to see a little bit of that vastus lateralis right there. I'll just separate it with a little bit of black like that. And then finally draw in that line for the buttocks. If you remember, the uh, vestus lateralis was that, from the side view, it's this big muscle right here that's underneath this long one. That's the biggest muscle from the side view that gives you the shape of the figure from the side view. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of love handle there as well. Come out with our butt muscle here, the buttocks. Come in this way, how it connects to the pelvis here, comes down. There's like a little bit of space there, but not much. All right, that's the basic shape of it. All right, now the rest, there's no reason for us to draw in real time, except for, I guess, the sake of repetition. And because I don't want this course to be like overbearingly long, I am going to go ahead and draw the rest of the muscles of the leg that we've already gone through and already know, because it's not beneficial to do those other angles of these muscles. Now what we will be doing is uh, the anus muscles in here. And they're almost like, um, they're set like you have one muscle here like this. You have another muscle that kind of overlaps that muscle, and another muscle, and that is the, the anus muscle, and then well, the anus, all this, all these muscles make up the anus, and it kinda, it's kind of shaped like that. We'll get to that when we do um, like a more under view or like a bent over view, and then we'll have that muscle. That we get a better idea of how the hips look overall. It's actually really important uh, not to skip that part, because uh, that shape is some is a shape that's important to learn. So the, the anus would come, you know, right, right up in here, and then it would start to develop like this. Actually, you know what? Maybe I will go ahead and draw this in real time. So again, we have the buttocks. Remember, just remember the connecting points of the buttocks that we learned before. When you know the like where the buttocks connect, then it all makes sense how to draw them. And it's really the connection points kind of dictate the shape. All right, I'll use this little trick again. Saves a little bit of time.
adding a few of the highlights here. I'm just going to kind of outline the muscle so that's easy to separate it. going to start separating the muscles with black lines. That way we start to get a feel for the, the muscle map. That's going to come in very handy. It's so basically when you draw the human figure, when you have, once you have all the muscles memorized and everything, um, you know, all the information becomes kind of cumbersome. And so what happens is you, you start to kind of simplify the whole issue and go, okay, well, now this is all I need to de dedicate to my brain now, and that'll, that'll be enough to actually draw everything I need to draw. So yeah. Now from this outer view, we're actually going to see how this muscle is going to kind of come around in the front over there. And remember, um, at this connection point where the buttock is, you'll note you'll have your two kind of bicep muscles, you know, the back leg bicep muscles back here. I want to give them some good shape here. There we go. We're going to be able to see a little, well, we're going to be able to see a lot of this muscle here, but it's, all of it's going to be covered too by that kind of more of that tendon muscle that's more of a tendon than it is a muscle. And it's going to kind of be like that, come around there in the front. And then we're going to have another muscle that's going to come here, come up between all these here and hide behind them. So now I'm going to start kind of drawing all this out so we can kind of begin to differentiate the muscles here. I know I said I wasn't going to draw this part in real time, but I figured there might be something to learn from just drawing along with me. That is drawing this particular angle along with me. Now all this is going to be covered, so I'm not really going to add so much detail to that. Well, I might as well actually. It's actually easier to just do it this way than to try to color them both. That probably didn't make any sense what I just said. What I mean is that rather than trying to draw the other muscle that goes over this and then, you know, draw these little lines around that, it's so usually just to draw them like this and then paint right over them again. That's why I'm not worried about getting too detailed with it. Let's go ahead and add our black lines back in here again now to show clear separation of muscle. So there's this kind of line right here to memorize. It kind of comes down like this. You see that? kind of S-curve line. So that's a pretty important line to memorize. You'll note there's different there's different lines like that of importance you can see around the figure that's important to learn. You'll kind of start picking up on them. All right, so now remember this muscle, it's going around. Let's go ahead and, it's long. It's mostly a it's mostly a tendon than it is a muscle because the tendon just goes way up like this. This remember this is from the side view what we drew here. So it's only way up here that even starts kind of turning into muscle fibers. And then still you have tendons way up at the hip. And like so, we might be able to see just a little bit of that, of that double part. I'm gonna do all gray first. I'll come back with the red part, which is kind of, oops, red. Kind of like that. And that kind of fades in to the muscle a little bit. I'll add a little bit of 
white fibers in there. Again, let's add some muscle separation with the black line. Let's draw the other part of the bicep, which connects here. This is the leg bicep, not the arm bicep. Remember, this one kind of comes around. Oops, that's a little too kind of more like more like this. Kind of connects over there up front, so we can't see its connection point. You might be able to see a little bit of um, some under muscle there. Be able to catch a little bit of that. I'm going to start separating these muscles. Lines, we'll be seeing a little bit of that magus muscle back there. Separate them. This muscle has a big tendon there. We'll be able to see a little bit of side muscle over there. And then it comes down and around. We see this other muscle that's overlapping in the front. And then we'll draw its tendon. Let's go ahead and start separating these with black so we don't get confused what muscles wear. Finally, we'll be able to see a little bit of muscles in the front. And there'll be another tenant back here, connects up. Can't see it though. And there you go, so that would cover the leg from, from that view. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw this on pause because there's no reason to draw that in real time. And oops, um, I did forget some muscles over here. All right, and this is the sartarius. This is that muscle we covered before. And it, I said it was important to show that kind of um, outer part of the leg here. And I'll, I'll go back over and show you what I mean in just a second where we drew it before. Remember, this is an inner muscle. So it's the inner part of the leg, not the outer part of the leg. So when we go back over here to the inner part of the leg, this is that muscle that comes all the way here to the inner part of the leg. And it's kind of thicker from the side view, and that's what gives that, you know, thickness to the leg. And then when you come down and have the calf muscles, you know, that's how you have that difference in you when you have the kneecap and everything on here. So you have the kneecap here. And as you, you know, begin to draw the definition of your knee in this area, these are the muscles that this that when you draw the leg, it's kind of like you have this line here and this line here you kind of memorize. So it's basically what ends up happening is you have your hip here, um, or rather it's kind of shaped more like this, right? So you have this hip here, right? And this is where your love handles and everything are. Your leg comes off of that. The thing you kind of memorize is you have this muscle comes in, you kind of memorize this shape here that comes down. So this is the kind of shape you kind of end up memorizing. And then you have this other shape back here. You know, you have your knee area. And then you memorize that the calf kind of comes off of that. And when you memorize the leg this way, it just helps draw it better. And so, but you know, if you know the muscles like we're learning now, it makes simplifying it easy. But if you try to just learn a simplification of the muscle system, it can be very difficult to draw that way because you don't know any of the connecting points or anything yet. So it's like you're just trying to draw from memorizing, okay, this is like how the leg, it looks like that, you know, and that's how you're, oops, I don't have the pen. You're just going, okay, that's how the leg looks and, you know, the knee and you're just, you're memorizing lines and shapes, but you're not understanding why it looks that way. When you understand the muscles, where they connect, you go, ah, oh, that's why we get that shape. And now that you know why you get that shape, and you see it from, like from this inner this inner view here, and I probably should have drawn this muscle 
a little bit differently. It should have been more out over here. But oh well, looks looks fine. Just a little bit skinnier than I wanted him to be. Okay. And when you draw the inner part of the inner leg, then it makes sense why the inner leg looks the way it does. Actually, I know why this doesn't look right to me. This muscle kind of comes higher. And see, when I know the connection point's up there and it comes down, and I get a feel for that muscle better, I can go back and see, ah, that's why it doesn't look right. If I didn't know the, the connecting, the, where, where the muscles connect stuff, I wouldn't really know why is it not looking right. Of course, there's a bunch of other tissue in here, you know, like other, other fatty tissues and everything that make the leg look the way it looks from the side view. So um, I know it looks weird when it says muscles, but it does look different when you start getting everything in there. You might actually see a little bit of the serratus over here too, just barely. Um, just to see part of the tendon part of it like that. I'll go ahead and I'll outline that in black as well. We can see it's actually supposed to be part of the leg there. There is one thing I want to remind you of though is that when you're drawing the leg, the muscles come way up here. The muscles of the leg start way up here on the hip crest, the same place the love handles connect to do. So love handles connect to the top part of the hip crest, the leg muscles are connected to the bottom part of the hip crest. And then the hip is pretty much as visible there, and that's why you know it's you know fatty tissues and stuff over, but that's why sometimes you can see that bone popping through because there's no muscles actually overlapping it there. Actually, what it, it is beneficial because this this starts. I realize that this starts us on our path of drawing the muscles from the different angles. So we know this muscle connects to the kneecap, the tendon, right? So the rectus femoris connects here to the kneecap, comes up. The tendons come up this way. We can kind of just sketch in the general shape of the muscle now. You know, it comes up here. Kind of, it's kind of hidden under there, but then part of it comes out, and we get this kind of shape here. All right, I'll go in and I'll start coloring this. Like so. Coming back with this dark color. Add a few fibers in there. Remember the uh, fibers on this one, they kind of come like this, like a V almost. We're not seeing the direct center of this muscle, so it's got kind of for short and we're seeing it from the side. Looks kind of like that. Just draw a few dark lines in here as well. Let's get black now. Separate these muscles a bit. That's like the only part of your penis that actually has a muscle to it. That very tip of it, or end of it rather, in this case. Depends how you look at it. Okay, so there we have it. All right, so remember on both sides of this here, we can see the vestus medialis and, and lateralis. The lateralis is on the outside, the medialis is on the inside. Let's go ahead and sketch the basic shapes here. As that, remember that muscle there goes around it, then you have medialis from this view, 
this is pretty much what we're seeing. And it kind of comes around. That's how it connects down there. That's the tendon part. All right, let's go ahead and fill it in with the color. And we'll add, remember these, these also come sideways. These muscles, these three muscles in the front are like kind of almost contradictory to all the, almost all the other muscles, which the fibers go in like the direction of the length of the muscle. In this case, they don't. All right, let's go ahead and sketch out the vestus lateralis now. We know it comes, there's these muscles up here. And let's go ahead and just kind of sketch those in really quickly. Kind of a line. That way we know we have this other connection point which goes underneath those for the vestus lateralis. And it kind of comes down here. Remember it connects to the tibula. Comes up here. Immediately kind of comes across this part of the femur and then kind of comes up and out like that. That's the general shape and the rest of it's being hidden by that muscle there. Hidden by the rectus femoris. And like I said, the lines run contrary. But this muscle here, all these muscles, the lines kind of run con contradictory to how you would think they would run. It's not very intuitive. You would think they'd run the long way, but they actually run, you know, like this across it the short way. And again, you can you can see that in bodybuilders when they, if you look at some that flex their leg muscles really big right there. All right, let's go ahead and continue separating these muscles with black lines. So we have that big muscle connects all the way up here to the hip, comes around here. Remember, this is your right tensor fasci lady, and it comes down and it's going to cover the vestus latus and connect down here to the tibula, right about here. We want to have that, we want to see a little pocket right there. This comes all the way down. This is that muscle uh, that's mostly a tendon that you can see from the side view a lot. That's why you can kind of see this muscle because we're kind of viewing the side. Remember, three-fourths views are always viewing two di like two different planes, like a box. You know, if you have a box and you're viewing like two different planes, right? You're viewing the main plane and the lesser plane. Um, in this case, it'd be more like this, more like main plane and lesser plane. It's usually what you're seeing when you're seeing a three-fourths view. And so we're seeing anyway, so we're seeing the side plane here a little bit and then the main plane, the front the front the front plane. And right now the side plane is acting like the lesser plane because it's being foreshortened. We're seeing less of it. Alright, let's go ahead and put this muscle in now with black. We're also going to see just a little bit of one of the muscles in the back coming around here and attaching. We'll see a little bit of tendon back there attaching. And I 
think that covers it. We might be able to see a little bit of a little bit of, of the buttocks. All right, let's go ahead and draw in some dark lines here. Remember, you have this kind of split here in that top part of the muscle. So as you can see, when you, if, hopefully if you've been following along and you're doing all the exercises, you're starting to feel how, ah, this is all starting to come together now. You know, how the muscles work is starting to make sense. And how the body looks then, how the contours, how the outside the body starts to look, is starting to make sense too. And then when we kind of figure all this out and, and put a body mat to our figures and go, okay, now let's kind of start simplifying all this. We'll simplify the skeletal structure to a simplified skeleton. And then you'll realize, ah, oh, that's why. So if you've already taken my previous course, the um, Master Human Figure course, then you, you kind of already have a feel for the proportions and all that, but you don't have a good feel of anatomy yet because we didn't learn like where muscles attached and all that. And so if you've already gone through the course, then this is to make tons of things click. If you haven't gone through that course, you're kind of maybe lost right now wondering, why am I learning all this? What's the point? But as we then start to connect all this to different parts of the body, you're going to start seeing how it all relates and like, ah, now it all makes sense why we draw the things the way we draw them. And when we learn the simplification process, it'll be really easy to learn. Whereas if you started with the Master Human Figure course, it might have been difficult to learn the simplification process. It might take you quite a while. But this will take you the longest, learning anatomy. But then after you have anatomy down, to learn the simplification process will be easy. And you might be thinking, hey, this guy looks weird, you know, his butt looks weird because like there's so much space, but that's, it's true. Just look at an anatomy book, you'll see, that, or even a live human being, um, if you can find an anatomy dissection, that's how they look um, because you have all these muscles here, right? So we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll draw those muscles in a little bit. But when, when you have all those muscles there, um, and then you have a bunch of fatty tissues and everything that kind of wrap around, this is what starts giving you that shape of the butt, and then you know, more fatty tissues, and it starts giving more of the shape of the whole human body, then it starts making more sense. And we'll go through the fat tissues and where they build up and all that too. All right, so we might as well cover these muscles really quickly. Uh, I don't think they're really worth knowing the names of them, but well, it's better from an under view because you can't really see them all from this view, from the back view, but we can see quite a bit of them. Right, so we'll go through some of the muscles we can see from this angle here. We'll get more into them later. So you have the uh, the coccyx coming down here. That is basically, you know, the, the tailbone, as it's also known as. And it kind of looks like that, but it's hard to see here in this uh, image. And so we'll draw this muscle. This is the coccygeus muscle. And it comes underneath the buttock over there. And then we'll have another one on this side. And where it connects is an important to be honest. But just in case you're wondering, it connects to this other, right underneath the buttocks, it connects to this other part of the hip. Remember you have this other part of the hip back here that it connects to. So if we were to kind of, you know, connect to this other part of the hip over here. And that's it. And it connects here to the coccyx. Right next is the Iliococcyges, and let's go ahead and add some texture to this muscle here really quick. They all branch out from over there, from underneath the buttocks. Go ahead and add in its fibers. Now, what this is going to become important, the reason why this will become important to you is when you're drawing like certain butt shots underneath shots, it'll, it'll help understand the the region of that area and how it looks and go, oh, okay, there is all that space there. That's right. So I got to make sure I account for that. All right. So this muscle connects right in here. The, this this angle right here is not a connection point, but it comes up like this, connects to this inner part of the of the hip. There's this. Remember, the hip is like a, like a there's like a circle inside of it missing. So if you view it from underneath, you know it's like a circle missing. We'll get into that the underneath view of it too. And it comes up in here, connects right next to the inside where this connects to, right in there on the hip. And actually, it should be a little bit thinner than that. Okay, so basically it looks like 
like that, almost like two triangles. Let's go ahead and add some fibers here. Okay, so I'm just keeping the shape simple here. Like so. All right, next is one that kind of disappears behind us. It's the obturator internus, and it connects all the way to the femur bone, and partly here to the, to the, I guess they call it the hip, but this part of the, this part of the hip at least. And we're only going to see part of it. It comes way over like that and connects over there. But again, this muscle isn't important. And I don't want to belabor the point with unimportant muscles. But I just want to show the part that we can see from this angle. I'm just going to add a little bit of definition there. All right, the next muscle is the uh, pubococcygeus. We'll go ahead and draw it to look like this. I'm going to kind of be wrapping around. And we'll see it from the under view, how it all kind of looks like, almost like, I don't know, a honeycomb or something. Or, not a, I don't know. You'll see what I'm talking about. And it looks like this. Add some of your fibers in here. I need to draw this dark, underside of it kind of dark. In black. There we go. And we'll add just a few, a couple of fibers in here. Right. Right next is the puberectilis, or rectiles. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. Again, all that stuff wasn't important to me, so. Like this, and then finally we'll have we'll handle the muscle here, and we'll we'll you'll see also like how different this looks when you view it from another angle. And so there's this is where the hole is right here, and we're getting kind of small to add any little bit of details, but I'll try to separate the shapes with black. All right, so there you have it. That's the general shape. Right, and that's where the anus is. All right, so this is a quick sketch view of how the hips look from underneath. So when you look at the hips from the front view, let's kind of get rid of some muscles here. See these two little holes? So what that hole there is, these two holes here, that hole there, those two holes there. That's what we're seeing right here and right here. I'm going to do that in red so it's easier to see. Okay, so there and there. Let's go ahead and take this and put it on here with bones. And when we have the sphincter then, so what happens here, here we have the tailbone, and then it starts coming up to your spine, then the skull's way up there. You have the arms coming out here, the, the femur bone coming down and get big towards us. You have this big hole right here, right? So where this, where this right here wraps around, that, that's all coming up back up behind, behind the body. So this is the, that's all this right here. Right, that little calyx, the tailbone, this part here, the sacrum. This all comes down, you have the two pelvic bones. There's a hole in between that and all that that goes up inside like that. And you can see the hole better here, right? All that, there's a hole going up that way. And that's the hole we're looking up. And you can here, you can kind of see it here and here. Comes back, we can see the hole, it's going up that way. There's also a hole here in the front 
and it comes all the way down through there. And you can see the hole here, and this hole it goes down, oops, like this, and it comes down out this area here. So if you'd imagine a big spike, it's going all the way through like that. That's important when you're going to draw certain like poses where people are bending over or anything like that. Let's go back up here then. Okay, there we go. Oh, I forgot. I forgot if I mentioned the name of the one one of the muscles that we drew. It's the external anal sphincter, the very tiny one there. All right, so let's go back up here. Now, to get an idea of in the relation with this hole where it all starts, right here between these two parts of the pelvic bone, that's where you have that external anal sphincter. And it's going to be about this big here. I'm on the wrong layer. Like so. All right, let's go ahead and like Outline this with black. Then we have the puberectalis that we'll be drawing next. So let's go ahead and kind of outline this. So next is the puberectalis. We'll kind of just draw it in here first. It comes down, starts to come up here, and it's like there's other muscles here. So there's actually two thin muscles that come here and connect to the part of the hip bone there. And over here like that. This is a mouthful, but these little muscles are called the superficial transverse perennial muscle. So there you have it if you want to memorize that crap. But yeah, so so it's thin little muscles there. Let's go ahead and color in this next muscle here. And here I think you're gonna see like when you look at the top of a honeycomb, I think maybe you'll you'll kinda of see the shape that kind of shape I'm talking about. And drawing it backwards like this uh, I think just takes a little bit longer because we're kind of going the backwards a long way about doing this. And we'll use red to add some of the little shapes here. Although I don't think we're going to be able to get much as far as detail out of here. Next is the bulbous spongiosis. Now this muscle here we've drawn before from the front view and this is the base of the of the penis, the only muscle that the penis has. And so it kind of connects, that, that muscle kind of has a shape like that. So let's go ahead and make sure I get the shape of this muscle down here correctly. And then it connects right here, comes around to the front. It's actually, there's actually two different muscles that go around to the front that kind of form a tube in the front. But from this view, this is what you see. Like so. You can kind of see the the similarity now. We'll, we'll draw the female too a little bit separately because the female does look a little bit different in this area and, and we'll We'll draw the female too, like the, when we draw the map, the female map body, and we'll show the map of the body and when the parts that are different. Right next, we have the ischiocavernosis, and that comes here, and this falls along the pelvic bone like this. It actually goes underneath these crazy muscles that I already forgot the name of, because there's no way I'm memorizing those. If you want to be my guest, I just don't see the point. All right, now continuing, we'll sketch out the next muscle. And one thing I um, I noticed I did here a little bit incorrectly, all of this should be a little bit bigger and higher. And it's one of those things that you, mistakes it's easy to make when you're zoomed in. And I know I've drilled that several times, that point. Just be careful when you're drawing small or drawing zoomed in that you don't draw it too small. All right, so. Just make sure you remember the connecting points. They connect way up here 
uh, way up here on these bones here on the hips. And when you know that, then you go, okay, that's right, so all this then should be bigger since it's all wrapped around it. I know I lost some detail there, but just instead of redrawing it, just kind of drew it bigger. Right, we're going to have two more muscles, um, and so they have to take up the equal amount of space. So because of that, this muscle needs to be bigger because they all kind of take up equal amount of space here. This muscle needs to come out. It comes actually all the way down anyway, so like this. And it comes out, kind of has a shape like that. So that's a better shape of the muscle anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and shape that with a little bit of darker red here. And they kind of, the muscle fibers kind of do that. They kind of wrap around like this, come down. Almost like a horseshoe. All right, let's go ahead and outline this in black now. All right, so sorry about that. A little bit of a misleading there, sort of. The thing was just too small, and now, now it looks more correct. Okay, then you have the next muscle, and we'll just go ahead and sketch in the muscles really quick here. Remember, they have to kind of meet up evenly, so kind of like this, almost like a drawing like a church, big church door or something. And then here, oops, and here. Just remember the connection points are way up here toward the top of this bone. And they all kind of curve down like that. There's another little muscle over here. Kind of goes over the top part of this a little bit. We'll just draw it in there. Who cares about memorizing the name of it, but if you want to. It's the obturator internus, or internus. I'm not really... Internus. I don't know how that exactly that's pronounced. It's probably Latin or something. Sounds Latin. All right, so now we're rendering the pubococcygeus. That's probably so not pronounced right. Pubacoxygis. Anyway, if you want to go learn Latin and Greek, you can do that too. And then you'll really be able to pronounce the crap right. I know some art instructors, they really take that stuff seriously, you know, and they like teach it and and in your course you gotta memorize it like, dude, that what a waste of memory space. Why are you teaching me to memorize this stuff, you know? Like, I don't want to be a medical doctor. I don't need to know this crap to draw it. Just explain what it looks like, how it works, the mechanics of it. That's all I need to know. And so you see, each one of these are connecting connecting um, to, this, to this part of the hip here. And then if you just want to know where this connects to, this actually connects up here like that. So this muscle continues going like that, but it's covered by the next muscle. At least that part's covered. But uh, that's where it goes and connects to the coccyx or to the tailbone, if you want to call it that. And then these, all, these muscles kind of all connect together. That's how they're forming. All right, and finally we'll draw these last muscles here. Do you remember the name of them? Probably not because I know I don't. All right, so this is the iliococcygeus, if you want to memorize the name of it. Be my guest. I sure ain't going to stop you. It actually comes up a little bit higher. It covers a little bit more area here. It's a pretty big muscle. Now with all the, as with all these muscles we've drawn here so far, each one of these particular ones have a right and left. So right now we're drawing the left. And then you have the right one. And notice how far away I'm drawing the fibers from that center connection point. The reason why is because all that is actually 
fibers. Right, this is all the tendon fiber. And I'll go ahead and sew separation. There's that separation there. This one doesn't have separation, it just wraps around. But this one does have that separation, so. This one has that slight separation. All right, so hopefully you draw this along with me. This is definitely something you're gonna to wanna to draw a few times and memorize. This is important. Knowing how this looks from underneath is important. Um, knowing the region of the sexual organs or the muscles in this case is important because then you'll know where the sexual organs go. You'll know when you're drawing, you know, someone from a certain point of view, uh, you know, girl bending over or a guy bending over and say they have tight shorts on in your comic book or something, then you'll know, hey, that's where, you know, I have to put stuff. That's where I, ha you know, I have to have the crack, you know, panties coming up and over. They have to come down the front if this was a girl, for example. And, you know, knowing where the stuff is located will help you know where all that's at. Right, so as we can see, the differences are minor between the male and female. So we can see the hip is, is a lot wider in the female, and you can see this even from the under view. You can see how, it's, how it has more of a squatted shape like this, more of oval, and this is more of a round shape for the male. And so this makes the muscles attached a little bit differently, but the muscles are the same. So starting with the center muscle, we still have the external anal sphincter, right? So here and then here. And we still have the next muscle that comes around that, and that is the puborectalis, or, or um, puborectalis, and so that's here and here. You can see you still have the same lines covering part of that muscle, except with the female, the mus these muscles are the same, and these two muscles are the same. So this triangle here is the same, but notice the female that triangle is, is wider because the hips are wider, so these two muscles form a wider triangle, these form a narrower triangle. Also, the female has another muscle here that the man doesn't have that stretches between uh, those two muscles, or it kind of connects to all of them. And this is the deep transverse perineal muscle, so it stretches between all this here. Then there's two more muscles here that the female has that the man does not have. And also included, um, part of this muscle that stretches is going underneath these two muscles here. And they have the two holes in it, and then all this middle part here is like a tendon. So this is all one big muscle here. It's all right here, it's all shaped like that. It goes all the way across, it has two holes in it. And then this is all tendon instead of muscle. Uh, to make it strong, so I change its color. Right then, the uh, bul the bulbous spongiosis are these two muscles right here. There's two of them on each side, and they lay on top of the muscle underneath it. Uh, all these muscles here on the anus are the same for male and female, as you can see. So they remain the same. So all the muscles are the same, except for this muscle that stretches all the way inside here that has the two holes with the um, a lot of the uh, tendon here in the center, and then these two muscles here, and then also there's this tiny little um, kind of fibrous tissue that the woman has between the anus and, I'll just call it her, her vagina, even though this isn't really her vagina, I mean it's the base of it, it's like the muscles of it, um, but the rest is all like more skin and fatty tissue. And this is called the per perineal body, so this little kind of like whitish spot here that I drew, that's the perineal body. All right, so in the next lesson, we will cover, we'll start to go over the calf muscles, the lower leg, and then we'll get into the lower arm or the forearms, and then finally we'll cover the hands and the feet muscles, 
and the structure of the hands and the feet. And then we'll start getting to the simplification process of how we can just know the proportion of the skeleton and just draw it straight out and, and, and body shapes in relation to each other. And then we'll get to the um, outer layer simplification body mapping to, to kind of simplify the muscles. We already know where they connect and stuff. That information should, should be there in your mind now because you've gone through all these lessons. But simplifying how to draw the body just makes that much easier and faster to draw it. And you don't have to think as much. And then you'll go, okay, when you get across something complicated like arm moved up or something, okay, I know this muscle connects here and here, and therefore it's going to stretch like this. And then uh, we'll, we'll get into other things like the fat tissue and the skin and the skin. So where the fat um, mainly where the, where the fat tissue, uh, I guess, builds up where the cells get larger, and so people get thicker in that area. And we'll go through the different areas where people get thicker, the different kind of body types from that, that develop from people developing fat in different areas, for the most common and the less common. And then we'll get into, you know, uh, the over, like I said, the overall skin, the, how it fits over the body, how it makes the whole body look different with the fat tissue and the skin on it. And how the, how the difference between male and female, when we do the, the simplification process and the body mapping, you'll see the difference between the male and the female. And then finally, we'll get into uh, different poses and positions, what happens when the arm flexes and the legs flex, and, and we'll get into more of a dynamic posing, which, which really, and normally, and, and by most people, would be an entire different book. If they're writing like a, a series of lecture books for you, uh, one book would be what we've already covered. Another book would be like the simplification process. And yet another book would be the dynamic poses. And you can actually see books like that on Amazon. And lectures will go that way. And also courses, if you were to buy courses online, they go the same way. They'd break it up separately and charge you separately. But I'm going to do it all in just one big course for you for an awesome price, as you, as you already know. Okay.